No one's doing this exact thing, and I don't know why. No. Around 90 degrees. That's four gallons of milk. I've decided I'm gonna make Colby cheese today. I love Colby because it's super easy to make and um, it's a super melty cheese for smash burgers. And yeah, I don't know, we just like it. I'm gonna add my culture in. I'm trying really hard to not just drop it all in one big clump. Great, I'm gonna sit there for five minutes while the culture starts to incorporate into the milk. Okay, great. I think we'll just let that sit there for about an hour. So I'm inventing a present for Rose, but I have no idea if it's gonna work. I looked for ideas and no one's doing this exact thing and I don't know why, because this seems like the simplest thing in the world. It is simply two pieces. Here's one piece. It's just a pipe. It's kind of, I sandwiched it with plywood, but there's there's just another little square tubing welded to it right in there. This piece is just a base. It's a it's another steel pipe. It's welded to, this is all just scrap steel I had around. And then just this plywood is glued and screwed to it. It's a cheese press, right? You guys can see that. But if you Google it, no one's really building this thing. They're all building fancy, like I think they're Dutch style cheese presses with levers. Rose has been making hard cheese, not crazy Parmesan cheeses, but just normal like cheddars and Asiago's and Colby's and whatever, stuff like that. Without a cheese press, she just tries to like balance. She puts a little uh, cutting board on there and then tries to balance heavy containers on it. But like cheese is squishy, so it just, they like tip and then fall over. Or they tip and they don't fall over, but they like squish the cheese all crooked. All you need is to squish the cheese straight. And I think it looks awesome. I think it's gonna work. I just don't see people doing it. So we're gonna go give this thing to Rose. She's gonna make a cheese. We're gonna press it with this press and we will prove whether this is actually the simplest cheese press in the world or a super bad idea. Looks just the same as when we left it an hour ago. So now I'm just gonna add my rennet into the cheese, or to the milk, I should say. It's just diluted in some water. Pour it in, give it another little stir, and let it sit for another half hour. This is one of my favorite parts. But, oh. but that's not the favorite part. Oh. Tell me what that feels like. I don't know, it's very satisfying just to run your knife through this. It's like moose, maybe. But you actually, say moose, I think big, hairy, <laughs> and smelly. I think chocolate, creamy, oh, and yummy. <laughs> chocolate moose. <laughs> okay, that's it. I'm gonna let it sit for 10 minutes just to let these curds just sit there for a minute. Okay. And then actually is my very favorite part. While we're waiting, we have to have a look at this cheese press. So it's gonna go into service here pretty soon. Pretty well everyone has access to something that's a little bit heavy, 20 pounds, 30 pounds. And that's all you need to chest press a normal cheese. The problem is all those heavy things can't balance on a squishy cheese. Right? The key is balancing on something that can't be balanced on very well. So we're gonna test ahead of our actual cheese pressing. We're gonna test the cheese press on something that we couldn't balance on. Well, anyways, I'll just show you. For example, this pumpkin. We could not balance anything on this pumpkin, but we'll prove it to you. We'll show you, just a second. Julia's honey. It's a seven kilogram bucket. So that's like 15 and a half, 15, 16 pounds. Give it a good try. Okay, balance it. No, you can't balance that. <laughs> no. And that's like cheese. Actually, the difference is cheese gives you the impression that it is gonna balance because cheese just kind of squishes kind of flat. 
but it's not actually flat. And as soon as it's a little bit out of balance, then all the weight just squishes more and more and more. And it's like, so let's try this again. Put the pumpkin in the press. We actually might break this pumpkin. We'll I was just going to gonna say, we'll maybe. have to eat it then. We'll have to have pumpkin pie. Mm. Okay, here we go. Put the bucket on there and see if it'll balance. I feel like it's going to break the pumpkin. Let's see what happens. No way. It's perfectly balanced. Look at that. This is going to work. I know. I'm super excited. And we could just keep stacking them up, right? We can put another one on. How many are you going to put on the cheese? Two. Two of those. So like 30 pounds yeah. ish. Like we're going to make the cheese. We're going to press the cheese today and we're going to flip the cheese tonight. We're going to press it overnight and I'm going to show you the cheese tomorrow. If it works. If it works. <laughs> this is actually my favorite part. Really? <laughs> this is what you have to do? This is what I get to do. Have you washed your hands? <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> I should go do that. Wow, like you have to use your hands? It's the best way. Why? Because you can regulate it and then you can feel the cheese curds and know when they're ready. What makes them ready? Um, well, you'll see in a little bit that they start to form more cheese curds and they get stronger by breaking apart and letting out the little bits of whey out of them. But yeah, you just slowly want to pull the cheese curds down from the bottom and pull them up. And then as you're doing that, you slowly break them apart like this process. It's supposed to take like 45 minutes. Well, you heat up this pot to, I think it's 100 degrees. I have to look again, but I think it's 100 degrees. 89, cooled down a little bit. You can feel it down at the bottom. It's nice and warm down there. That's why you're also bringing it up from the bottom and then it makes the cold go down to the bottom and warm up. Okay, so I'm just gonna stand here for 45 minutes and do this and you can come back and see what it looks like in a little bit. Look at that, eh? Yeah, wow. Now you put some warm water into here. That's about the same temperature as the water that, or the way that you just took out. And you just sort of basically just rinsing it. And then I'm gonna break it apart a bit again. Ooh, it's warm. I'm kind of rinsing all those curds. It keeps coming. <laughs> Just want to pack it into the mold. Tell me about the consistency of that. It's spongy, but solid. It's juicy. You ready? Yeah. Is this the big moment? This Are is, we testing the press? This is the big moment. Hang on. Okay, so you have the press in a pan because the juice is coming out of it already. Yeah. And take the top of the press. Okay, here's the simplest cheese press you've ever seen. Look at that. See, it stays level. Yeah. Right? Even though that was just like a big ball, like the pumpkin, that is staying level. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Oh, there it goes. Look at that. You can see just pouring out the top. Wild. Tongue. There's a lot of liquid in there. There it is. There's the cheese press in all its glory. This cheese press is awesome. Did it work? Yeah. It's doing exactly what it needs to do. Like without the press, you could do almost the same thing. I was doing the same thing, just, but... You would put these buckets on there. It's just that... And it would teeter. And then sometimes they would fall off. Quite often they would fall And sometimes off. they would make really crooked cheese. I was very sad. Yeah. Because my last cheese before this one... Uh, not before this one, before I had the press. Yeah. It was like this. Yeah. It was very crooked. Yeah. It was embarrassing. Okay, so what are you doing? Okay, I'm going to just flip the cheese actually so that it gets a nice smooth surface. It looks like foam. <laughs> does it feel like memory foam? Uh, yeah, actually it kind of does. This is like a memory foam pillow. Kind of. All right, put this thing back in here. Alrighty, I'm gonna do it again. Just for another half an hour? Another half an hour, and then we do it once more and I add another weight on top. Oh, okay. Wanna check it? The last time, I'm gonna flip it before I leave it until tomorrow. Cool, it's a round of cheese, hold that up. 
And any of those little crinkles in there are just from the cheesecloth. Mm -hmm. But this time I'm gonna Pressing put, straight down. Put more weight on it. Like it's supposed to. Here we go. 14 kilograms. It Bump it, it, see if it all falls over. Pretty solid. Not even wiggling. <laughs> no. You didn't even put it on straight. I didn't? No, look, it's all oh. crooked. Oh, I see it now. It's still not falling over. No. But we should straighten it out, because now should. it'll bother me. This thing really works. It works awesome. Like, this works amazing. You could make this so many different ways that are all pretty easy. Right. It's just a base with a post, and then it's a pipe and a little platform. That's it. But I've never seen one like this. I I've seen other ones that y people use four pipes and it's just like way too much work for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like a one pipe kind of cheese press kind of guy. Good to know. <laughs> okay, so we'll see this in the morning. Yep. And we'll see like an aged one that's ready to eat. Yep. ready. Look at that. Looks good, hey? Would you say that the cheese press is almost unhumanly easy to use? It's incredibly easy to use. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I don't know why there's not more cheese presses like this. I don't know. Maybe there is and I just haven't found them, but I'm very happy with the one that I have. Yeah, okay, so now what? It needs to brine in a salt water mixture for a few hours, and then I'm gonna air dry it on the counter for a few days, and then it's gonna get vacuum sealed and put in the root cellar to age Where months. cheeses belong. Where cheeses belong. They're happy Don't place. they call it a cheese cellar? Or a- Cheese cave. A cheese cave. Yeah. A root cellar is also a bit of a cheese cave. Yeah. We already had lots of cheese in the cheese cave, so we can show you this Colby from three months ago. Feels like it feels so different from that one. Like that one, remember we were talking about memory foam? It yeah. feels like a stiff memory foam, yeah. but still feels memory foam like. This one feels like cheese. It feels nice totally different. Hard cheese. Yeah. Oh, I want to say something actually about this. It has to do with the cheese. Is press. it going to interrupt me from eating this cheese? No, eat it and then I'll say it. It's just like great cheese. It's just that you made it yourself. I was gonna say about these little holes that are in here. Yeah. Um, I've been learning that those are actually due to not very good pressing. Oh. So I, I'm very curious. I won't be able to tell right now, but it well, might. We can give an update later. Yeah, these it might be better with less so this holes. This cheese is not supposed to have cheese holes. Well, no, they're not really supposed to have oh, holes. Okay. So maybe this new cheese press will fix that. You just problem. need some proper pressing <laughs> with the world's simplest cheese press. If you like cheese, then you probably like butter and you probably like cream and milk and you might even like a wood cook stove. So you can check out some of these other videos. I think you will like them.